Welcome to the UNA Baseball Review. Here are your hosts, Coach Mike Keene and Jeff Hodges. Welcome to the UNA Baseball Review. I'm Jeff Hodges, joined by UNA Head Baseball Coach Mike Keene. Coach Keene, the UNA Lions, 21-8 and eight overall, 10-7 and seven in the Gulf South Conference. Still, still right in the middle of the Gulf South Conference race. But uh, this past weekend, a big Gulf South Conference series, two nationally ranked teams with UNA taking on UAH. And the series didn't really go at all uh, how we had planned or hoped. Uh, the Lions were swept in the three games, but let's go back and start with game one. You lost four to nothing and really wasted an excellent pitching performance by Brantley Clonch. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, Brantley, after the first inning, uh, you know, we had a couple pitches that were on the outer half and uh, then came in and missed over the middle plate and they hit a home run, jumped up two to nothing. But after that, he settled down and pitched great and was really matching their pitcher. And we knew coming in, uh, their starter was going to be really talented. Uh, he's an Auburn transfer. And at times, you know, he was a little inconsistent if you get him on the day where maybe he's not as good. But unfortunately for us, he was really good and uh, had good velocity and really kept us off balance. And uh, really, we could never get anything going offensively. And then really, Brantley was 2 nothing for most of the game. And then they scratched a couple runs late. Yeah, they got two in the first and two in the ninth. So Brantley with a complete game, uh, even though in a losing effort, a valiant effort there. And then you turn around in game two, the Lions end up losing three to one. But again, Riley Sanderson locked in a pitcher's duel uh, with their guy five, uh, nothing, nothing going into the fifth, and they were able to pull out a couple of runs. And again, you know, uh, you know, Riley, you know, didn't have his start last because uh, of an illness. Came in, pitched it really well, and and we knew the guy, the their their pitcher, the Mitchell kid. Uh, his numbers were off the chart. Uh, you know, he, you know, he's kind of a guy that came out of nowhere. He's just having for them just a, a one of those years that you weren't anticipating. They weren't even scheduled him for be a starter. He was killed through a little bit of innings a year before, but you know, obviously he's having a great year. So it's one of those things where no one's really hit him. I think he's got like a 0.68, you know, earn run average. So he's able to obviously mix pitches real well, kept us off balance, and again, we just couldn't get enough base runners on to really get into our system. He came back on Sunday, took a quick three to nothing lead, but then uh, things turned again. They pulled their starting pitcher and uh, we were unable to score again, but lost that one 11 to three. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, obviously disappointing. We felt, uh, you know, we to regroup, came back out and really jumped on their right-hander that they started the game. And that's been kind of their struggles. They're trying to find that third arm. Um, and the Howe kid has really pitched for him a lot last year, has really struggled. And uh, and they brought him in and uh, just started, I think that game was our inability to adjust. I mean, we knew he was, uh, how he kind of pitches. We knew what he needed to do. And uh, we just really were not staying on any off-speed pitches whatsoever. Um, then obviously you, you give them opportunities and they were putting the ball in play, you know, much more than we were. And they got a few breaks, got a few holes, and then they just really were able to get some hits and then just really put the game out of control for them. And that was really a, a series. It was a battle for first place in the GSC. So even though the three losses do hurt, they don't hurt you that much. The biggest thing, I guess, is the attitude of the team and, and kind of where we stand right now because you've had such a great attitude to this point going into the season. I know that had to be a little bit of a downer for the guys. Well, I think there was a lot, you know, obviously there was a lot of hype going into the game, you know, obviously with UH being in the top 10 team and, you know, us kind of putting ourselves in a position to, you know, be at the top and, you know, we were, one of our goals was to have an opportunity to host a GSC tournament. Uh, obviously a disappointing weekend, but I thought we've had an opportunity to bounce back, had a pretty good week of practices and we needed it to, to get ready for a very good West Georgia team. So, um, you know, we'll just see how we bounce back. You know, still a lot of season left. We still have four weekend series, so by any means that we – um, put us in a position where we're, you know, down at the bottom. We're just now not quite at the top, and we got to be able to play well the rest of the year. I was going to say uh, four series left, uh, two at home, two on the road. So each of those games is going to be important because with percentages, there are some teams like Delta State who have had a lot of games rained out, but by percentage-wise, not playing those games doesn't really hurt them. Yeah, it's, that's what's kind of – you can't really figure out, okay, what do we need to do, who's doing what, because it is percentage. There's so many – you got some teams that have played all the games, and you got some like us who are like three out down and then – or four down, actually. Then you got about us who's about, about – sorry, excuse me, Delta State's about six down. So you, it's hard to try to figure out where everybody's at because it will come down to percentage. So I think that's what we talk about. You just got to try to, you know, win as many games you can and, and you try to get your percentage up there high enough where it doesn't come into play. We'll take our first break, and we'll have a player profile segment for you when we come back. TNT Fireworks is proud to support the University of North Alabama and the Lion baseball team. Like the UNA baseball program, TNT Fireworks is committed to excellence. Our products, service, and teamwork are the reasons we are America's number one selling fireworks brand. Check us out at TNTFireworks.com. And remember, if it's not TNT, it's not fireworks. TNT Fireworks encourages the entire Shoals area to support head coach Mike Keene and his UNA Lions by attending a game at Mike D. Lane Field. Roar Lions! What's going on up there? Definitely, Jeff. This is all for you. Oh. Are you serious?
We're here with junior pitcher Riley Sanderson from Owens Crossroads, Alabama. And Riley played at Madison uh, County High School and uh, recruited the UNA in 2012 as a freshman. That season didn't really go as, uh, as planned for you, Riley. I know you came in, you had a couple of appearances, but then had an arm injury and had a little bit of a setback. Yeah, my, uh, my arm was giving me trouble about midway through the season. Um, I, I pretty much told Coach Hancock that weekend when it started hurting. I think it was after the Martin Methodist game and went to the doctor and they said I had to had an ulnar nerve problem, so I had to get a surgery for that. You came back the next season, you were able to get a medical red shirt for that one, but uh, three and three in 2013, a 279 ERA, and really an important role as a midweek starter for UNA, and that had to feel good to be able to get in the starting rotation uh, mm -hmm. right after coming back from the injury. Yeah, that, I felt like that was a that was a big boost in my confidence as a, coming back as a redshirt freshman. Gave me the boost I needed to like continue, I guess, working harder to uh, meet my goal. And gave you a little opportunity, I guess, to adjust to the, the level of Division II uh, baseball as well. Moving into that role last season as a conference starter, much different role, a lot more pressure in that situation, but you handled it great. A 7-3 and three record, a 376 ERA, 14 starts. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of starts in a college season. Yeah. Uh, I mean, pretty much I just listened to what Coach Hancock had to say, and uh, he gave me some keys. I had to stay back, and I really just had to follow what he said to, to get me through and uh, to help me be successful that year. And uh, last season as well, it had to be a little bit of a, a – struggle or confidence uh, downer that we weren't able to score any more runs than we were last year. We really struggled to score runs, but uh, this season we've come in, you got to have a lot more confidence going out on the mound knowing our team is going to be able to, to yeah. back you with some offense. Yeah, for sure. This this year I, I feel like everybody's bought into the, uh, I guess, Coach Keen's plan, and it's working out great for us so far. So. And how good has it been to have uh, guys like Jacob Westerhouse and Brantley Clonch? Uh, Y'all all came in and been here, uh, yeah. you know, four years together. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I mean, getting to work with them for four years now and getting to hang around them and I know whenever I come out of the game if Westerhouse is coming behind me or any of the bullpen I know that the game's safe so it doesn't make me worry. <laughs> and uh, three and three this season already uh, pitched uh, 32 innings but you got a good stretch run uh, here what do you have to do to, to be successful to be able to get in this conference tournament and maybe make a run at the NCAAs this year? Uh, for me I, I mean I'm definitely gonna have to step up and be more consistent but uh, as a team I think we need to just keep doing what what Coach Keen is uh, told us in the fall to do is well, our opposite field approach and uh, just really just work on getting our butts down and all that, all that stuff that he preaches. One big so. thing for the pitching staff this season, really limited the free opportunities for the other batters. Uh, we're among the national leaders in strikeouts versus uh, walks ratio. Uh, so that has to be a point of emphasis for the coaches this year to limit those free passes yeah. for the opponents. For sure. I, I know last year, we or the last two years, uh, in the fall, Coach Hancock would he would uh, give us a drill, and if we missed a spot, it counted as a walk, and he tallied all those up at the end, and we had to run a foul ball for each. So I think that got in the pitcher's heads not to do that. A little motivation there. <laughs> yes, sir. Thanks for joining us, junior pitcher Riley Sanderson from Owens Crossroads. Nice player profile segment there on Riley Sanderson, and Riley again uh, having a good solid year for you. And he's a guy that came in in 2012 with a pretty special group. Uh, there were five uh, really strong freshmen that year. Three of them still with us: uh, Brantley Clonch, Jacob Westerhouse, and Riley. And they're really some mainstays in the program. Yeah, it was uh, we, they came in and together as freshmen and uh, really got their uh, feet wet right right away. Uh, Riley is a little bit different. He had uh, end up having a uh, elbow situation, so he had to have surgery. So it was a year behind him now as far as eligibility wise. But obviously with Brantley and uh, Jacob Westerhouse, both those came in and really significant innings right away as a true freshman, and they've continued to really solidify our pitching staff and the stability that they brought to him has been has been really good and really great for our program. And then obviously Riley, you know the way he's kind of come on and, and Summers and just you know he's a guy that's again jumped into the weekend uh, starting rotation, and it's nice. Nice to have those guys that have been in your program for a while. We've both, of course, been around UNA baseball in the Gulf South Conference Division II for a long time. And, uh, you know, back several years ago, it wasn't very common for freshmen to come in and have such success in the GSC, but these kids have, have really done that. Yeah, a lot of things have changed over the years, uh, you know, especially we've been around in the 90s just because of the way the recruiting was out. There's a lot of junior colleges because of the academic standards. You know, we could get some uh, very talented guys that couldn't go D1. Um, but now around with some of the junior colleges closing, there's more opportunities for getting some high school guys. And a lot of them have been able to come in and play for us right away. You know, we position player wise you remember when Josh Carpenter and Josh Sear both came in and uh, played through four years and then you've had the pitchers that have done the same so you know you like get them in your program if you can get them uh, obviously it's a big transition for any freshman coming in and some of them you don't know how they're going to handle it and some handle it really well. 
And of course, Riley's a great example of, of a guy that came in, uh, had an injury early that could have affected him, but he's really worked hard to get to the position he's at. He became a, a midweek starter for you and then a conference starter last year and this year. Right, and you know, I think a lot of his, the, those guys did go out in the summer and get some real pitching and get their work in. And Riley's was a, not a real uh, major injury. I was just a nerve problem in the elbow and just was kind of having his finger going numb when he was throwing once in a while. And it's uh, they just basically have to move the ulnar nerve onto, over to another position. He's able to do it. So the rehab was, uh, was fairly quick and then really was able to bounce back and, and, and like saying Riley, just uh, you know, I think Coach Hancock obviously having those guys in and getting them kind of groomed for what they need to do, how they need to be successful in the GSC. And I think that's the advantage when you come as a freshman, you get to see firsthand how difficult the GSC is, as opposed to a junior college guy who kind of has to have that first year to kind of say, okay, I got to see what I got to do, how I got to pitch. Uh, then maybe you only get one year, then the next year they're really good. Where at least you, at least you got them. Where you now we've had two to three in four years for the, some of them that, for this program. And even our games that we've lost, our pitching staffs, uh, you know, seem to have done pretty well in most of those games. But the 3.36 ERA right now ranked among the national leaders. The big key, I guess, is 191 strikeouts, just 70 walks, and we're among the national leaders in walks to strikeout ratio. That is one of the things, uh, you know, uh, Coach Hancock works with our pitchers, and that's one thing he preaches more than anything else. You know, it's kind of like ours with position players on base percentage. His is about walks. Um, and to minimize the walk because if you put it in play, force them to put in play, it's hard to create innings and try to make them swing the bat. And then what he does is he try to trust our defense to make the play. So, you know, they've done a great job and, and they really bought into what we're trying to do. And, and I think it does help when you have guys that have been in our program that long they bring the other guys with them. And I think that's what those guys bring. They're such great leaders and they bring everybody with them. They're so focused. I mean, they do everything you can. They're just not only very good players, but they're great individuals. We'll take a quick break and have more line baseball for you when we come back. He is the most interesting man in the Shoals. He is an artist, a writer, a philosopher, a historian, musician, astronomer, wine connoisseur, environmentalist, peace prize recipient. When he speaks, people hang on each and every word, especially the verbs. His personality is so magnetic that he cannot carry credit cards. It is said that once he taught a German shepherd how to bark in Spanish and taught a horse to read his email. Someone recently asked him what he did for fun, and here is what he said. I don't eat out every day, but when I do, I eat at City Hardware because to me, it's the most interesting restaurant in the shows. UNA junior catcher Kevin Hall from Collierville, Tennessee, and Kevin played at Collierville High School at Meridian Community College, and uh, you were an all-conference performer at Meridian. You're also a scholar athlete, so I'm sure you got plenty of offers from four-year schools, and just talk a little bit about how you ended up here at UNA. Yeah, well, I had a pretty solid year at the plate and behind the hitting wise and behind the plate catching, and uh, I didn't hear too much, actually, from Division One schools, and UNA called me, and I saw the opportunity, came on a visit, and loved it, fell in love with it, so felt like it was the right place for me and ended up here. And, yeah. Everyone wants to end up in the starting lineup, but you had some good competition. Uh, Peyton Thomas was coming off an injury, but Jess mm -hmm. Smith, uh, you were able to land that starting catcher spot. And uh, But I'm, that uh, good competition had to help push you into in getting in the role you are in now. Yeah, yeah. I actually, it started off in the outfield in the fall, and then I got moved to catcher because I was struggling at the plate a little bit and see if it would help me. And it turned out pretty well. And, I like the guys back there. They we push each other and we get better each day. It's a good group of guys. One of the most important relationships on any baseball team is the relationship between the pitchers and catchers. And obviously, the uh, the pitchers have done a tremendous job this season mm -hmm. for the Lions, leading uh, among the national leaders in ERA and walks to strikeout ratio and that kind of thing. But just talk a little bit about that relationship and what a great job the pitchers have done this season. Yeah, it's important to be on the same page. You know, calling pitches. You want to kind of have an idea of what the pitchers out there thinking. Him the same with you makes the game flow go a lot easier, uh, more comfortable, more relaxed, and just makes things a lot easier. You've had an opportunity to be in the lineup both as a designated hitter and catcher. Just talk a little bit about the, uh, the level of pitching on the Division II level and uh, your you know, adjustment to that. Yeah, it's definitely a lot more difficult. Pitchers know how to pitch uh, around hitters better. They locate better, better breaking ball, better change-ups, more movement. It's definitely a, a big adjustment from junior college, from high school, and so on, and I'm sure Division One pitchers are even tougher, but uh, the adjustment period definitely takes a toll on. It's tough, but 
you got to battle to get through it and keep striving to get better. Lions 21-8 this season, an important part of that is the on-base percentage. We're among the national leaders in bases on balls, and you yourself a 351 on on-base percentage. And uh, that patience that you guys have had at the play has really had to help. Yeah, we our approach definitely uh, helps our on-base percentage go up. You know, Coach Keen always talks about being patient and making the pitcher work, getting that pitch count up, and it definitely pays off for us. It's junior catcher Kevin Hall from Collierville, Tennessee. Coach Keen, we talked about the UNA pitching staff in our last segment and that player profile on Kevin Hall there, uh, one of the catchers. The guy's really come in and done a great job for you this year. And that relationship uh, between the pitchers and catchers is very important and probably a good reason uh, that we're having so much success this year is the job the catchers are right. doing. Right, and I think that's the thing. We did have uh, two new ones uh, came into our program. Uh, obviously, Kevin Hall, who was actually in the fall, uh, played in the outfield a lot. We didn't know which way we were going to go. He was a catcher in junior college, and then we moved him this spring, and he's really done a good job of acclimating to our pitching staff. And obviously, Jess Smith has done the same thing. He catches Riley Sanderson and they can pretty much catch anybody we need to. But both of them have really worked hard with the pitchers, understanding how we're going to pitch them, how we're going to do our approaches, uh, really pay attention to the scouting reports. And uh, both of them have just done a really, really good job for us this year. And they've uh, you know, played as pinch hitters, designated hitters, catchers, I mean, rotated, come in in key situations and uh, been able to deliver several times for you. But uh, let's talk about four of the guys right now still hitting over 300 for the season. Uh, Dylan Calhoun, Jake Smith, Brett Guzay, and Taylor Hayes. And you really got about four other guys flirting right at the 300 mark. But uh, those four have really just been very consistent throughout the season. Right, they are. You know, it was one of those uh, prior to the UAH series, you know, we had more than that. It was just we took a little bit hit on that weekend. And uh, But, you know, Dylan Calhoun's still having a really good year, and he's still uh, been up there at top and when he's you know getting on base and doing some things he can really drive in runs he's really got complete with his averages RBIs he's really doing a lot of good stuff uh, you know Brett Guzay is having a really good year uh, not only defensively but you know, when we move those guys up to the one and two hole so probably a couple of nice surprises are you know Jake Smith coming in you know from what he's done I think he's probably had one of the uh, one of the biggest turnarounds from last year and you know we've had him everywhere he started hitting in the nine hole moved up to the six hole five and then he's actually been hitting three so we'll probably end up staying there for a little while to, to see how he's going to do but the biggest thing he's done is his ability to hit you know using the whole field and obviously Taylor Hayes was another one too we pinch hit him and then you know gave him some DH opportunities and just was been pretty consistent and, you know I started looking at him when he's hitting 350 360 you know it's not hard not to it's hard not to put him in the lineup and see what he's going to do but he's another one that's just done a good job for us. Of course, one guy's just below the 300 mark, but Dylan Boston hitting 295 and again uh, continues to be uh, doing an amazing job uh, driving in runs. 33 already this season with a good bit of the season to go, and he had 86 uh, in his previous two years, so he really uh, has a knack for driving in the, yeah, the runners. Yeah, Dylan, you know, that's one thing having Dylan. Uh, you know, I've, I've had him in the three you know, hold, and we've had him in the four. I really like him in the four. Uh, he hits better, but to, to, he's a good RBI, and I think the thing he's done this year, uh, I thought he's done just a really good job this year of, of driving the ball the other way. He's had more balls he's driven in the other field throwing breaking balls he's he's really tougher to pitch to this year he's had more walks than he's ever had which is uh, you know we talked about that going into the season you know he had good pitches and I even thought you know with UH this weekend I thought he had some good approach I thought he was one of the few guys that was really well balanced even if maybe didn't get a few hits but he did get two on the last game so but again he's a guy you love having up with guys in scoring position because you know he's going to probably put the barrel on the ball somewhere and hit it and we hope he continues to drive in those runs and one of the lineups adjustments you had made uh, for the last week uh, freshman Kyle Hubbock at first base he's batting 275 He's driven in quite a few runs and had a lot of key hits. Yeah, you know, that was, uh, I don't think Kyle with left on left, you know, we were, gave him that shot to try it. Uh, um, didn't know how he was going to do, uh, but we he's been doing pretty well. And obviously, uh, pretty tough lefties to throw him in there. But uh, he's down for a true freshman jumping in there and doing what he's doing. Uh, he's had some good stretches. Uh, we know he's got some ability. You know, he's got some strength in his bat. I think the biggest improvement is he's really worked hard on his defense. And I think that's where the biggest change has come in there. Uh, but like I said, the one thing about Kyle is he's got a lot of energy. He comes to play, likes being at the ballpark, and he plays really hard every time out. And that's nice to see out of a true freshman. We'll take our final break and have more Lion Baseball when we come back. Hi, I'm Mike Keen, head baseball coach at the University of North Alabama. Have you ever heard the saying, great baseball players are made in the offseason? As a college baseball coach, I can tell which high school recruits are on a weight program and which ones are not. Help your young athlete reach the top of the sport by training with the personal trainers at the Courthouse Racquet Club. Our five trainers are ready to work at your athlete's pace and your schedule. Try our 3 and Me training program designed for three athletes to work with a trainer and lower the cost to fit any budget. Call Ken Irby at 764-0034 to set up a program designed especially for your young athlete. The Courthouse Racquet Club, proudly serving the Shoals for 30 years. 
TNT Fireworks is proud to support the University of North Alabama and the Lion baseball team. Like the UNA baseball program, TNT Fireworks is committed to excellence. Our product, service, and teamwork are the reasons we are America's number one selling fireworks brand. Check us out at TNTfireworks.com. And remember, if it's not TNT, it's not fireworks. TNT Fireworks encourages the entire Shoals area to support head coach Mike Keene and his UNA Lions by attending a game at Mike D. Lane Field. Roar Lions! A great combination, Frostbite and Montague's. Florence's first self-serve yogurt shop has over 50 rotating flavors and over 100 rotating toppings. Customizable frozen yogurt. When the cup is full, the toppings are close by. Just weigh and pay. All sandwiches at Montague's are under $5. The best Philly cheesesteak and Reuben in town. Delicious sides and they cater. Get a UNA student discount and they accept the main card. Like Frostbite on Facebook. Frostbite and Montague's, 1611 North Pine Street, Florence. Open now, Frostbite on the UNA campus. TVA Community Credit Union is proudly open to the entire community, offering unequaled service and convenience. They are the TVA Community Credit Union, and they make you feel like you're part of the community, part of the family. Customer service is great. I mean, they're, they're great with my wife and I and my daughter. We bought all of our houses, all of our cars, everything through them. With a little one running around, I don't have a lot of time. So it's real simple just to pull my mobile up and go straight to the site and check my account. I recommend them all the time, to be honest with you. For one, I mean, their rates are great. Try to work with you to get you the lowest rates, to get you where you need to be, set you up for the future. Don't feel like I'm a number at all. I feel like I'm a part of the family. From mobile banking to the latest platform in online banking, we make managing your financing fast and easy. Our members are the owners of our credit union, so there are no high-priced stockholders to pay, allowing us to give our members totally free accounts and amazing loan rates. TVA Community Credit Union, everybody's credit union. We're here with junior pitcher Blake Talley from Brownsboro, Alabama, and uh, you played at Buckhorn High School, went to Calhoun uh, Community College, but uh, when you were at Calhoun, you pitched and you know, played uh, in the field, and that's got to be a little different for you this year coming to UNA, just being in the pitcher's role and not getting an opportunity to be out there every day and playing. Yeah, it's definitely different. Uh, definitely something I had to kind of get used to at first, not being able to play in every day. And, you know, I've noticed being a pitcher, you uh, you kind of got to be ready all the time, especially as a reliever, you know. And you never know when that time's going to be, but you got to make sure you're ready. Because if, uh, if you're not ready and you get put in the game, you're going to realize quickly uh, that uh, you're in trouble. So it's definitely been a – an adjustment, but I've, I'm glad I did it. So we got a great tradition of uh, former Calhoun players uh, playing here at UNA, and in fact, your coach Mike Burns was an All-American here. But just talk a little bit about how you ended up here at UNA. Well, uh, I guess it was last spring. I kind of hadn't decided what I wanted, what I wanted to do. I had some uh, offers from some smaller schools, and and I just I kind of I contacted Coach Keen. I was like, you know, would y'all be interested in me coming to UNA? And he said, yes, for, uh, we'd love to have you. And he said, you know. We'll start you off doing both, hitting and pitching, and we'll go from there and see what you want to do. And now I'm here and ended up as a pitcher only, and I'm glad it all worked out like that. Lions off to a great start, 21-8 and eight right now, and you came into a pitching staff that had all three of its conference uh, starters returning, but you were scheduled to get a lot of midweek work, and then the weather mm -hmm. kind of intervened, but uh, that really had, like you said, you just have to be ready when you get that opportunity. It's been it's been weird. I've never experienced anything like this weather before, and. It's, it's really been tough, especially for the pitchers, you know, because we don't, when we have been throwing bullpens, it's been inside, or we've gone just straight to game action, you know. It's, but uh, Coach Hancock's really done a really good job helping us get prepared and stay mentally prepared to pitch when, who knows when, but we've been ready. You've done a tremendous job when you've gotten the opportunity, a 2 0 record, a 281 ERA, 17 strikeouts, just five walks, and that's really been an important factor. Uh, with our success this year as a pitcher is limiting those free uh, free bases uh, mm. for the opponent. Yeah, Coach Hancock always preaches on pitching contact. And early in the year we did that, but we really didn't hit our spots like we wanted to and kind of got hit around like against Stillman. But uh, we did a nice job of adjusting and, you know, really focused on hitting our spots and not walking people. And that's really one of my main things I wanted to work on is not walking people because that's, to me, that's giving free runs. You know, I don't, that's something I don't like doing. So. In your role in coming in in relief, a lot of times the uh, game's on the line or there's uh, some bad situations going on, but you have to have a lot of confidence, and it seems like the, the pitching staff does this season, that our team can fight back and can yeah. score some runs and pull some games out. Yeah, we uh, we have a lot of confidence in our pitching staff. I think all of our pitchers have a lot of confidence also. But we, You know, I feel like we're the best pitch staff in GSC, 
And that's how I feel, and I'm sure other guys feel like that also. And so to be a pitcher, you got to have confidence. If you don't have confidence, you're going to get hit. So, Thanks for joining us. Junior pitcher Blake Talley from Brownsboro, Alabama. Welcome back to the UNA Baseball Review. Coach Keene, the Gulf South Conference race, hitting uh, the stretch run here. Four weeks left for everyone to play. And uh, right now the Lions in fourth place, 10-7 and seven, uh, in the GSC. Alabama Huntsville has taken uh, the lead. And what the significance of that is, is for the first time in quite a long time, uh, whoever wins the regular season is going to get to host a tournament. Uh, that could or could not uh, be a good thing because in the past when teams got to host, a lot of times it was kind of a hex and they were the first team out. Yeah, it, a lot of it, it uh, you know, it's something that we used to do in the 90s uh, and then they, when we went to Millington way back with uh, switched over to end of, and we've been trying to find a neutral side. Uh, the biggest problem with that is the last three years, it's uh, we don't know where we're going to go. It's hard to find a neutral site. Someone's going to commit to that many days. So they decide this year to go to the whoever wins the division will host the site. And like I said, it can be an advantage uh, because it is on your home site, but it also can be a disadvantage if the weather doesn't cooperate and how much uh, personnel you have to help you out. So um, like I said, that was what we were hoping to get in there, get an opportunity. Uh, now we'll kind of see how it plays out, who's going to have a chance to host that. We talked a little before about games that were missed, but the Lions, uh, four of our uh, Gulf South Conference games were wiped out by poor weather. Delta States had seven. Uh, it's just kind of across the board uh, a variation, but with everything being by percentage, it's going to be kind of a strange uh, run to the finish this year. Where, like you said earlier, you may not know exactly what you have to do to get here. Yeah, it, it really, that's what I said. You're kind of looking around. You, you really got to kind of look at percentages and not, you know, okay, well, he's two games out, three games out, because the, you know, the wins and losses, especially the losses total, could be different because it depends on how many games you played. So uh, it'll be an interesting down the stretch. Uh, a lot of big games coming up this weekend and, and, and down the, you know, some of the top teams and some of the bottom ones I've got to, got to kind of see how it goes out and obviously we got to take care of business too by winning as many all the series all the way out. A nice homestand coming up this week on Tuesday Spring Hill coming in uh, for a doubleheader at two o'clock and a great hitting team we were able to uh, beat them a couple games uh, back over spring break and then Lee coming in uh, this weekend for a big three game Gulf South Conference. Yeah series. you know last time you know we know Spring Hill can really hit and you know we had the profile on Blake Talley but he was also one that came in and really shut him down last time and I, I think he's going to another opportunity to get out there and do the same. Uh, I've made a lot of progress but uh, you know it's going to be another challenge uh, for our pitchers against Spring Hill and then obviously Lee's uh, another that's got a very good pitching staff and um, they're going to be a good quality ball club and uh, you know they've been a team that's uh, kept been in every close game uh, and you know haven't really been offensively but their pitching has been really good. That Saturday doubleheader uh, against Lee is going to be Military Appreciation Day and I know having a lot of former players in our program who've gone on served in the military but also our relationship with the ROTC program on campus that's going to be an, a nice day. Yeah I think it, you know, we like to honor all the veterans or even the current ones that are serving the military at you know, a little special meeting for me because I do have a son-in-law who's actually in the Air Force over in uh, Germany uh, so it means a lot to us to have them out there and we will have uh, right now I think we're planning is we'll have some t-shirts for sale and then the proceeds will go to benefit uh, the veterans so you know you have those available come out to the game and if you are a veteran we'd love to see you out there and honor you. We've had some guys, Vito Redman, uh, Bobby Hand, several of those guys who've uh, served. Also, uh, Josh Wetzel came back, one of our former managers, uh, and throughout the first pitch uh, uh, yeah. two years ago. Yeah, and then we had Kent Scalamero last year. You know, all three of those, all four of those have served, and uh, Vito Redman's currently serving right now, so it's great to have those guys and uh, their service to the country. The Lions with a homestand coming up on Tuesday, Spring Hill for a doubleheader, and then this weekend, as we mentioned, Military Appreciation Day, three-game series with Lee. Hope to see you there. Thank you for watching the UNA Baseball Review. Please join us again next Sunday at 1130.